Welcome to Crema Media's Polity, I'm Brad Doubleman. I'm in Parktown to meet with political analyst Aubrey Machiki to discuss the lead up to the ANC National Conference in Mangaol. Aubrey, what similarities or potential similarities are there between the 1949 ANC National Conference and the upcoming conference in Mangaol? Well, if we look at the similarities from the perspective of the ANC Youth League, there will be an attempt to achieve two things by the Youth League. Firstly, to remove a sitting president of the ANC, and secondly, to radicalize the content of uh, ANC policy, particularly economic policy, in the same way that the 1949 generation of uh, ANC Youth League leaders such as Tambo, Mandela, uh, Lambert, and so on, succeeded in unseating uh, Dr. A.P. Kuma as the president of the ANC and replaced him with uh, Dr. James Moroka and at the same time radicalized the political program of the ANC which led to the adoption of uh, the uh, program of action, the 1952 defiance campaign, the past campaign, uh, which itself led to the Sharpville shootings the banning of the ANC and the formation of Mkwanto Esizwe in 1961. What are the objectives of the ANC Youth League in the lead up to the conference and what are the chances of their success given the suspension of Julius Malema and other top Youth League officials? Well, I, I think um, in the period between now and the time at which I wrote um, the column, uh, there has been a slight strategic shift on the part of the Youth League. Um, at first, the strategy seemed to be to contest the disciplinary uh, process. Um, and knowing that uh, Julius Malema was unlikely uh, to succeed, petitioned the NEC and take the battle there. But the shift I'm seeing now is that they seem to have decided that fighting that battle in the disciplinary process is to do so in a terrain over which they don't have an advantage. So they've decided to take the battle out of the disciplinary process. Hence the argument that regardless of what is decided in the disciplinary process, their leaders, including Julius Malema, will remain leaders of the Youth League. How do you see the leadership battle panning out in the current political climate? And what are the chances of a viable candidate taking on the presidency of Jacob Zuma in the lead up to the conference? There are three possibilities. At, at the moment, the strongest possibility is that there will be the growing sentiment that President Jacob Zuma must go, but he will have the advantage of not, of not having a challenger. That's the first possibility. The second possibility is that at some point between now and Mangawu, a candidate, possibly Kalima Mutlante, will emerge as an alternative. The third possibility is that there will be no challenger to President Jacob Zuma until the 11th hour, 59th minute in Mangaung, at which conference in Mangaung, someone might stand up and nominate an alternative candidate from the floor. And if that alternative candidate, and he may or may not be Khalima Mutlante, um, achieves the 25% threshold of support from the floor, he then becomes um, a contender who might even win the race. What are the strategic and tactical options facing Kalema Mutlanti should he decide to run for president of the ANC? Well, the strategic orientation of Kalema Mutlanti at the moment is, is, is a bit dif difficult to read, and partly because of the dilemma that he faces. The Youth League has made it very clear that they want him to be the contender. They want him to replace uh, President Jacob Zuma in Mangaum, but he does not want to have his image tainted by association with the Youth League and Julius Malema, and hence an attempt on his part to keep a distance between their calls for uh, President Jacob Zuma to be replaced and his own candidacy. Another thing is what will he do if the Julius Malema matter and the defiance of uh, the Youth League are taken to the NEC. Is he going to play his card there? And if he plays his cards there, does he run the risk of being seen as an opponent to Jacob Zuma? And if he's seen as an opponent, uh, an opponent to Jacob Zuma, is that going to promote or compromise his chances 
of being elected um, in Mangaou. The third thing for him is just to sit tight and wait until Mangaou, at which point, if indeed he does have a presidential ambitions, he might be nominated from the floor and launch a challenge against Jacob Zuma from the floor. Thank you, Aubrey. You must welcome.